Hi, this is Mrs. Ziegler, and I'm going to go over how to balance chemical equations. All right, so these are two different equations. I'm going to balance them in two different ways. The first one, the Al, aluminum, plus the chlorine, Cl2, to produce aluminum chloride, AlCl3, I am going to balance using what's called the inspection, I'm sorry, the inventory math method. Okay, so what that means is I'm going to list the number of elements and the number of atoms on both sides. So the first thing is I go from left to right. So I have Al and Cl. So on the reactant side, remember is the left hand side of the arrow, I'm going to count the number of atoms for each element. So here you see that I have no subscripts, so it's understood to be one. Where here I have a subscript two, that means that I have two of those. Okay, on this side, same thing on AL, I have no subscript, so that's one. On this side for the CL, I have two. Over here, I have three. So when you look at the number of atoms, you'll see that I am not balanced because the CL doesn't have the same number on both sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to balance the CL since the ALs are balanced. So a good rule of thumb is if you have an odd, I'm sorry, an even number on one side and an odd number on the other, what you'll do is you'll take that subscript and make it the coefficient for the opposite one. Okay, so that one has a two there, that one has a three there. So once I put the coefficients, I'm going to recount my atoms. So three times two is six, so that becomes six now. Two times three is six, so now my CLs are balanced. Here you see that the coefficient is also in front of the AL, so I have to recount that because it's attached, okay? So therefore, it now becomes 2AL. Now, I see that I'm still not bound, so all I have to do here is put another coefficient in front of AL to make 2, so that changes that to 2. So now that I have the same number on both sides, I am now balanced. Remember, whenever you put a coefficient in the front, of your formula, it goes to everything that is after the coefficient. And you are just multiplying this big number times the small numbers, the subscript, to get your total number of atoms. So here, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to bounce this equation using the inspection method. Okay, so inspection method is what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw coefficients in front of my formulas and then count in my head. Okay, so I'm just going to count out loud. So here we see on the reactant side, I have two H's. On the product side, I have two H's. On the reactant side, I have two O's. On the product side, I have one O. So again, odd and even. So I'm going to put this two in front of this H2O. So again, now I see that I have two O's. So 2O, so that's balanced. But because I put the 2 in front of this H2, now there are 4 H's. So all I need to do is put a 2 in front of this one. 2 times 2 makes 4 H's on this side. So therefore, this is now balanced. Again, I use the ins inventory inspection method. Okay? All right, so now we're going to do this one. All right, so for this one, the trick for this is you can see that we've got a whole lot of capital letters. Okay, so now I'm going to use the inventory method. So here I have PB, I have CL, I have AG. Now, whenever you see that you have a compound that has two or more capital letters, you have what's called a polyatomic. When you have a polyatomic, you want to look on the other side of the reactions to see if they have the same one. In this case, you see here I have NO3, and over here I have NO3, so I'm going to keep those together when I write them out instead of separating them from N and then O because it makes it easier for counting. So here I see again on the reactant side I have one PB. On the product side, I have one PB. Here, uh, CL, I have two. Over here, I have one. Silver over here, I have one. Silver over here, I have one. The NO3 over here, because I have no parentheses, that means I have one set. Because I have parentheses and a subscript on the outside, that means I have two sets. So then now I look to try to balance. So again, so I'm going to start again from left to right. So here I've got two CLs and I've only got one over here. So if I put a two in front of this one, that changes this to make two CLs, but it also changes my number of AG. So I change that to two. 
Then I go over here and I see that I only have one. So I'm going to put a two in front of this one to make this two AG. So now this is balanced. This is balanced. This is balanced. And because this two is in front of this entire thing, it also goes to the NO3, which makes that two. So now these are now balanced. This is my balanced equation. All right, so now the last one we're going to do is the most difficult. It's called combustion. Again, combustion is when you have the products of CO2 and H2O. Whenever you have H2O and O2 in a problem, you have to do this tip. Whatever number you want to put in front of the H2O, based off of what you have on the other side, this number needs to be an even number. Okay, so here I, I'm going to go through as to explain. So I'm going to balance. So first thing is I am going to use the inspection method. So here I have 2C over here. I have one. So I'm going to put a two in front of this one to have two C's over here. I have six. Well, if I want to have six H's over here, I'm going to put a three. But I have to think is three an even number to go in front of H2O. My answer should be no. So therefore, I'm going to take that away and I'm going to double it because I need to have an even number. When I double it, so I just times it by two, it becomes six. So now I count how many H's. So six times two means that I have 12. So that means I'm going to put a two in front of this one. So now I have 12 H's. But now I have to change my C's. So instead of having two, I have to have four. Now, since my C's and my H's are now balanced, I'm going to count the number of O's on this side. So 4 times 2 makes, well, I'm sorry, 6 times 1 is 6, and then 4 times 2 is 8. I'm going to add these two together to get 14. So I have 14 O's on the product side. To get 14 O's on the reactant side, I just have to divide by 2, and that's how I get 7. Now this is a balanced equation. Combustion problems are the most difficult to balance. Again, you will be practicing this for the next three weeks with stoichiometry. If you have any questions, please make sure you reach out.